I want to know what FanDuel is, and why the heck it's making so much money. I keep seeing ads all over TV, on YouTube, and as a person who doesn't really follow sports, I want to know what's going on. Why can I not stop hearing about FanDuel? Go to FanDuel I poured over some New York Times articles and poked around online, but I couldn't understand what they're saying. So I called my uncle to understand how fantasy sports work. His old job was at Merrill Lynch. Yes. I asked him a lot of dumb questions, and afterward I said the best way to understand what FanDuel is about is to just make an account and start playing. Good, you made it. Time to coach you up a little on FanDuel. Long commitment and immediate cash payout. So let's go. Go to the website, watch the little video, and make an account. The matching bonus. Uh. If you're in the United States, FanDuel is entirely legal to play, except for these five states. Because 2006 online gambling law made an exception for fantasy sports, because, well, Congress. Okay, I'm set up, and I've decided to go for broke and pony up $50 of my own cash. Money loaded on, I find I can choose between sports like NBA, NFL, MLB, and from there are four different game options. I chose to go with two baseball and two football, with a breakdown of 10 on one game, 25 on another, and then 10 on five on the last ones. Then I have to pick my players. Now, I don't know anything about the players I'm picking. I'm just picking at random, or names I've heard before, like Marshawn Lynch. I'm just here so I won't get fined. So, if I enter $25 into the contest, I get $1. Well, wait a minute, in order to get my $50 deposit bonus, that means I have to do 50 times $25 at a rate of $1. That means I have to put in $1,250 just to get my $50 so, play bonus. So, besides that deception, there are a few conditions I found though. I had to pick players from at least three different teams, and I couldn't pick more than four players for a team. I originally tried to pick all Royals players. Once I had a team FanDuel allowed, it's time to go watch the games. And thanks to FanDuel, it looks like I'll just be sticking with 50 instead of 100. While I'm watching the game, I want to talk about FanDuel's business model. They don't really disclose it, but I poked around anyway and did some math and found FanDuel takes about an 8-13% to rake on all the money in its pots. That's its cut, which is pretty large. Last year, FanDuel quoted they paid out more than $2 billion in winnings. If we took just 9% of that amount, that's a $200 million rake. And it's not exactly like they're handing out free cocktail vouchers either. Okay, getting back from the game, Royals won. Let's see how we did. Okay, quick update. I am currently doing way better than I expected. I thought my money would be gone like this, but currently I'm up 201 and 50 in another. And I kinda really wanna win now, to be honest. Right now I am, I'm at 24th position out of 1,400 people. And so we'll see what happens. But I can definitely see how people wanna keep playing this game. Deposited a total of $35 on FanDuel and won over two million. Well, I wait to see what the next FanDuel poster boy, like this guy. So people play fantasy sports and there's some money in it now. What's the big deal? Now, let me try to illustrate it with this little spiral. Normally, you pick your team up front. Sure, you can trade, but essentially you just go down the rabbit hole once all season. But with FanDuel, you can go down as many times as you want. Which begs the question, is FanDuel a game of skill? Or just gambling? We need to talk about statistics. When I talk to my uncle, who's been playing fantasy sports for a long time, he points out usually baseball is the only one worth playing. You see, this is what a football season looks like. 16 games. And this is a baseball season, 162 games. Baseball sample size is way better because individual games can vary wildly. In baseball, stats work more to your advantage. It's a longer season and your odds are better that X and Y will happen. But when you're predicting the outcome of just a single game, who knows what will happen? That's how statistics work. It's the ability to take in events over time and decipher out what's random. Which means in FanDuel, with a little Bayesian theory, we can really see some problems. Say I chose Aaron Rodgers as my QB, and he scored an average 7 points more during the game than any other QB. But let's say in reality 85% of the people playing FanDuel chose Rodgers, since I have a 7 point advantage over 15% of the people. This little kind of simple equation will show my true point advantage in the FanDuel game. 7 points times 15% gives me about a 1 point total advantage in the FanDuel game. Okay, switch gears. So now instead say, Brian Hoyer's score was better by 2 points on average than all other QBs. And let's say only 15% of the players and I chose Hoyer. This means I have an advantage over 85% of the betters who did not. And with the same equation, but with Brian Hoyer, I now have a 2.5 true point advantage in FanDuel. What? 
Talk to any true football fans, and even season-long fantasy football players know, Brian Hoyer is not beating Aaron Rodgers. It's only on FanDuel when you're just picking single games or weekends, and you have to calculate this stuff, and the probability of chance creeps into your results. It's good to remember in statistics, patterns develop only as you zoom out, and FanDuel wants you to gamble zoomed in. Why? Because they can make more money. Okay, time to see how much money I made today. Alright, I can feel the money already. I feel good about this one. Okay, today is now Sunday, the next day. Got to be games to play. Let's find out how I did. What? Try again. It's like my test scores in school. Zero. 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 Uh, I suppose that was predictable in the end. I don't think I've ever lost $50 so fast, but I wanted to see how the mechanics worked. So, to the point of this movie, is FanDuel evil or bad? No. It's still fun. It's fun to beat your friends and have a reason to follow the game. And sports teams know this. This is why they got that law passed in 2006 to begin with. I don't think I'll play again, but it seems like I'm in the minority. In fact, recently, the New York Times reported that the NFL signed deals to appear in FanDuel ads, and stadiums across the country are building lounges specifically for playing FanDuel and DraftKings during the game. They even have one where I live. And they're not the only ones cutting a deal. Google, Fox, Comcast, Time Warner, they're all sinking money into these companies too, because in their eyes, they see a tech unicorn. Right now, it seems like everyone is making money with fantasy sports. So, my advice? Just don't be the one they're making it from. Either way, with all the money and activity sites like FanDuel are getting, I don't think they're going away anytime soon. I just wish they would stop sending me ridiculous emails. There you go. That's the path to finding all you can about FanDuel. I can't believe, I can't believe, how could it be, how could this happen?